I've been living on the Eastern Shore for the last 53 years. The Deal Island Peninsula is important. It's an area that's, that's being affected by sea level rise, subsidence, and erosion. Deal Island is one of many, many small, I'll use the term fishing village, but that maybe doesn't quite capture it. They're communities of watermen. The local residents are very grounded in place. They were born here, they grew up here, they earned a living here, and they're buried here. So this is really important. Deal Island is special because it's Deal Island, but there's dozens and dozens of Deal Islands scattered all along the lower shore. But even at every high tide now, there's roads here in this community that go underwater. You know, I think some people are realizing that um, they are currently living in an area that is pretty compromised. So their house might be raised up, but trying to get to the house becomes a problem because the roads are flooded or the roads are eroded. Over the last year or two, we've worked with the Nature Conservancy and also George Mason University. The Department of Natural Resources has been interested in how we can use nature to help enhance the resiliency of this community. We're looking at natural features like coastal forests, tidal wetlands, dunes, which all kind of works together and plays a role in reducing risk. With additional sea level rise and with a particularly um, powerful storm, you might see that erosion start to move into this marsh and break away at the edge, and you start to lose marsh from the front end. So one of the things that we in our chapter are starting to think about and, and we really want to work on here on the eastern shore is where are there places where we think we can identify habitats that are not currently marsh, but that in say 50 to 100 years are likely to be marsh as that marsh migrates inland. And you actually have a good example here on site. See the tree line behind me? Those are dead trees from an area that used to be maritime forest, coastal forest. And as sea levels have risen, those trees are dying from the saltwater intrusion. So you actually see that habitat migration already occurring here at this site. My hope for this study is that um, we will actually get it out there broadly, so it'll go out to the Bay community, of course. Working with Celso Ferreira and his grad students have been actually developing these models at a number of sites here in the Bay. It will really be useful broadly to coastal resilience efforts all around the world because it will be one more data point to help us better understand how do these natural ecosystems provide that wave attenuation and erosion risk reduction. I started my career because I had a passion for surfing. And, you know, I, when I was looking for a college degree, I was like, well, you know, what can I do that's both exciting and keeps me in the water, but also moving society forward? And I really I wanted to do something. That's why I found environmental engineering so exciting at the time. And I started to, to work on that. And I always wanted to keep that connection to nature and to energy that the water has and all of that and how we could learn from that towards a better world and towards better structures and things like that. By measuring the vegetation characteristics of these areas and the natural features that produce wave attenuation, we're hoping to be able to provide a relationship between the vegetation characteristics and the wave attenuation that it provides. We want to make sure that we're learning from these projects so that when we go and we implement the next project, we're doing something that we know is going to work or that pushes the science forward a little bit. You know, if sea level rises, uh, accelerates, you know, to the point where we're talking about multiple feet, um, those things are going to be overwhelmed and it'll be a matter of retrenching to higher ground. But, uh, you know, over the, over the foreseeable future, uh, you know, building in some of these natural communities, oyster reefs, seagrass meadows, um, wetlands of various and sundry kinds, they'll all help. Trying to use green infrastructure, the idea is that we can help buy some time. It's kind of reached a critical point now that we can track it better, we can measure it better. The change is becoming more clear to us now than maybe it was 
a few generations ago or a thousand years ago.